All right, what's going on today, guys? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at my opinion on the top five most overrated weapons in Elden Ring. And before you guys get mad, I'm not saying these weapons are bad. I'm just saying there are other options out there that deserve equal amount, if not more, attention. With all that out of the way, let's get into the first weapon at number five. Kicking things off at the number five spot, we're going to go ahead and take a look at Rivers of Blood. As we all know by now, Bleed is an absolutely busted component of this game, and this weapon definitely does a great job of showing it. However, I do believe that there's a couple options that definitely outshine this weapon. Power Stance Curve Swords, or Power Stance Beastman Curve Swords with Bleed Affinity, you Sepuku them, and then you do the Power Stance Jumping Attack with it with the Claw Talisman, and then the Wing Sword Insignias. The Bleed Buildup and the Damage Buildup is absolutely insane. At the same time, however, this weapon definitely does a good job of showcasing how it's just ridiculous that the sword insignias can do with the bleed buildup and the successive attacks. The amount of damage you can do in just a couple Ashes of War is absolutely ridiculous. I put this weapon at number 5 just because I am not too familiar with it. This is actually my first playthrough with this weapon. I just see people using it all the time, so I felt like it deserved to be part of this list. And the only reason why it's on this list to begin with is the fact that it's not the absolute behemoth of a weapon that it was upon release. We all know how absolutely busted this thing was when the game first released. It's a shadow of its former self, but at the same time, it's definitely still up there. But as I've mentioned previously, there's definitely better bleed options out there than this one. And there's definitely something to say about Rivers of Blood in general. There's not too many weapons in this game that can just make Godskin Duo easy mode like this thing is doing for me. Also, I just noticed how many times I said absolutely in that former segment, and I'd like to apologize to you guys about. Because apparently this weapon is absolutely better than what I make it out to be. But with all that out of the way, we're going to finish up Rivers of Blood. It's a great weapon, it really is. It's got that great katana moveset, and the bleed bit up is really good. However, like I've mentioned previously, I just think that the Power Stance Curve Sword or even something like Mogwin's Spear can do more DPS. But that's going to wrap up Rivers of Blood. So we're going to go ahead and proceed to the number 4 spot. Moving things forward at the number 4 spot, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Giant Crusher. When you think of this weapon, what do you think? Just instant bonk, right? Well, when it comes to one-shot builds, I just feel like there are better options out there. While this weapon is really good, it does come with a stupid hefty requirement of 60 strength. And unless you're doing a full bonk build, some people might want to not invest in that, and that's okay. At the same time, though, as far as any weapon in the game, this thing has to have the best synergy with Royal Knight's Resolve and physical damage buffs. So it definitely has that going for it. However, if you're looking for a one-shot build that doesn't have the hefty requirements that this thing might have, I'd recommend trying the Marais Executioner Sword instead of this one. I mean, only problem with Executioner Sword is it's locked behind a boss, whereas this weapon you can just pick up in the overworld. So I can totally understand why people gravitate towards this weapon in particular. You can just snap it right out of a chest and alt this and be done with it. All in all, I think that the Giant Crusher is a really viable weapon. However, I just believe that there may be better bonk slash one-shot build options out there. That's going to wrap up Giant's Crusher. Let's go ahead and proceed forward into the number three spot. Moving forward to the number three spot, we're going to be taking a look at the Bolt of Grand Sacks. I just feel like when it comes to lightning damage, there are way more viable options. And without this weapon's Ash of War, I mean, what is it? It's a spear. I mean, does, do, does anyone really like the spear moveset in this game? I mean, it has that great added benefit where it does a stupid amount of damage to dragons. But when it comes to your lightning build, I mean, even Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike, it'll just one-shot the dragon, which with this, you don't have to play around dodging or whatever. You can just go straight for the kill. The one upside it does have to it, however, is its stupid amount of range you can do. I mean, even with uh, PvP invasions, you can just snipe people with its Ash of War. So it definitely has that going for it. I've personally just never been drawn to this weapon, and pretty much every single playthrough I go through, I almost never remember to grab it before Ashen Capital. And like I mentioned earlier, I just feel like Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike, or even the standard Lightning Strike, is a better damage potential. That's going to be the Bolt of Grand Sacks here. Good weapon, good damage, just a little too much attention in my opinion. 
With the Bolt of Grand Sacks wrapped up, let's go ahead and proceed forward to the number two spot. Sliding into the number two spot, we're going to be taking a look at the Moonvale Katana. While this weapon is really good, I'm not saying it's not, I just feel like that there are better int pairings and better int options for your mage build versus this. It has the classic unsheath ability with the magic affinity added to it, so you get the range attacks along with the magic damage. The weapon art scales purely with int, as I'm sure we all know by now. Overall, I just feel like the Wing of Estelle is a better option. It's Ash of War definitely has more damage potential as it has crazy burst damage along with uh, stance damage as well. In addition to that, it does come with the Charge Heavy where you can hold it down and it actually shoots out a burst, kind of like the Unsheath does. And the best part about it is, it doesn't cost any mana whatsoever. I will say, however, with the one thing Moonveil definitely has on Wing of Estelle is the blood loss buildup at a passive 50, which we all know the bleed in this game can be absolutely insane. Super buffable, super usable on pretty much every single boss, so it definitely has that going for it. All in all, I think Moonveil is definitely a solid option for your mage build, or even just maining the weapon throughout the game. I just feel like that there are better int options out there that deserve as much, if not more, attention as we discussed in the video talking about the Wing of Estelle, or even likes of like the Death Poker. You guys all know how I feel about that weapon by now. With all that being said, I definitely think Moonveil is a solid option to use as a main or even a side weapon, but I would recommend you guys taking a look at the Wing of Estelle. With that out of the way, let's move ahead to the number one spot. Wrapping things up at the number one spot, we're going to go ahead and dive into the Dark Moon Greatsword. While this weapon is absolutely incredible, it's absolutely legendary in the Souls community, I know. I just feel when it comes to Frost, it comes second compared to the Death Poker. The Frost buildup on the Death Poker versus this weapon, it's almost instant with the Death Poker, where as you can see with Verdon, I've hit him with three charge heavies and he still hasn't even proc Frostbite yet. For meanwhile, with Death Poker, it's almost instant in the Ghost Flame. While the DPS on this weapon is absolutely incredible, I feel like the Death Poker is just a better overall in option. As you can see, we finally proc fight there, and with the Death Poker, it would have already happened 20 seconds ago with me talking about it. As I mentioned before, however, the Dark Moon Greatsword might be the most singular legendary weapon in this entire game, as it does require the longest quest line in order to get it. So I can totally understand why it gets the attention that it gets. But when it comes to Frostbite, it just pales in comparison to the Death Poker. I'm telling you guys, you should really take a look at that weapon. But with that all that out of the way, that's going to do it for the Dark Moon Greatsword. And that's also going to do it for today's video. As always, I appreciate you guys coming out, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Thanks.